All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So, um, again, environmental impact is any change in the environment that is caused by an activity or a factor. And the change, um, again, may it be physical, biological, social, economic, or political. And the change may be caused directly by the activity, may it be direct or primary impact, or may result indirectly. So it could, uh, when you say indirectly, it is considered as indirect or secondary impact. And of course, um, the environmental, this, we are talking now um, on, the, on the Philippine setting, EIA in the Philippine setting. So again, environmental impact assessment is a process. And it would involve the following steps. Of course, we have the project screening, the scoping, and the description of the project, description of the environmental based on ecologic or ecological profile, and then identification of the key impacts, the prediction of impacts, the evaluation and assessment of significance, um, environmental management plan or EMP, of course, the EAS preparation or the environmental impact statement preparation, the EAS review or the environmental impact statement review, um, which will be done by the DNR EMB. And then, of course, the decision making, which will come from their office. And then, of course, the post decision monitoring and audit. Actually, after the EMB DNR issuing you ECC, so successfully you were able to secure an ECC or environmental compliance certificate, it actually doesn't end there. Every year, um, actually, it depends on the EAA study. Um, but generally, um, EAA, um, no, not EAA, but generally EMB, uh, DNR, will actually be monitoring your project. Uh, again, it depends on the EAA study and it depends on the kinds of adverse effects or adverse impacts of your study to, uh, to, the, um, to the environment. So if um, there is a possibility that they will uh, monitor and audit the impacts like twice a year, or maybe thrice a year or four times a year. But basically, uh, they would do uh, monitoring and audit at least uh, once a year. But then again, it depends on um, the adverse effects of your project development or your development project. So again, um, EIA uh, is a prediction. Prediction in EIA aims to identify the magnitude and other dimensions of the identified change um, in the environment, which a project or action by comparison with the situation without the project or action. That is why um, it is very important to have your baseline information again, because it is gonna be, it will be your reference point. So it's like um, also a good way in comparing as to what will be the effect of your project before the project and after the project is being implemented. At the same time, um, it, uh, it sought to establish um, a cost-effect relationship between the project or action as provided by a casual factor or, for example, um, an independent variable, which is your project. And, of course, the environment where, where effects are manifested as dependent variable. So, EA study is also just like a scientific study. Um, it's just that um, EIA is more, uh, which is, yeah, definitely, it is, it is a scientific study because um, your dependent variable is the, uh, is the dependent means, you know, it depends, it's the, defend, uh, it's the dependent factor or variable, which is, which is your environment. Environmental effects will be your dependent variable. And of course, your project will be the independent variable or independent factor. So what are the purpose of um, environmental impact assessment? Of course, to aid in decision making, uh, as I mentioned earlier. As we all know, um, EIA provides systematic examination 
um, of the environmental implication of a proposed action. That is why on the preliminary assessment, at first, as we can see, there is a background, there's an assessment of the impacts, and then um, there's a project description and the assessment of the impacts, and then there is a um, um, mitigation, mitigation and monitoring, and of course, the recommendation, recommending findings. Um, because again, it's a systematic examination. It's just not, you know, oh, okay, this is the adverse effects, and then, okay, this is the mitigation, and then that's it. No, it is, again, a systematic examination. And at the same time, it helps to clarify some of the trade-offs associated with a proposed development action, thus making a decision more rational. So also, uh, one of the purpose is to aid to the formulation of the developmental actions. If you're, it, uh, the good thing also with EIA is um, we can assess if your development project is, um, um, if it could really, if, if we could weigh up its, if we could weigh its um, benefits versus the adverse effects to the environment. Because maybe your development action is not really that beneficial to the environment or to the, to the well-being of, of the people in the area. And then therefore, if it's not beneficial enough, then, you know, why do you have to do the development project then? And then um, if your project is not um, beneficial enough, but the adverse effect is very high, uh, the risk is very high, then therefore it outweighs the beneficial factor or the beneficial um, aspect of your uh, development project. And therefore, it's better for you not to do the development project. Next uh, purpose is, of course, um, an instruction, an instrument for sustainable development. The good thing with EIA is, since um, we will know what is the adverse effects of your project, then therefore we can find mitigations to make the project um, um, its way to sustainable development. So as we all know, sustainable development is a way for us to manage our resources for the future generations. Um, another purpose is, of course, changing perspective on, the, on EIA roles. There has been um, issues with EIA um, um, where uh, there were cases like the perspective of EIA is actually uh, for a certain project not to proceed. No, that is actually not the perspective of the EIA. But the perspective of EIA, or the main purpose of it, is again um, on the decision making, um, um, mitigating the adverse effects of, of the certain proposed development project. Another, um, um, so um, with the projects and env uh, environment and impact, um, traditionally, traditionally, uh, Project EIA has applied to many projects. So what are these major projects? For example, um, um, sustainable capital investment cover large area, excuse me, um, wide ranging impacts like geographical and by type significant environmental impacts um, that requires um, special procedures and extractive and primary um, including agriculture and, of course, infrastructure and utilities. Later on the coming slides, I will be discussing to you what are these categories that is under the DAO 0330. Um, what are these categories that should undergo EIA study? Uh, of course, um, the Philippine EIA system defines major projects, projects according to um, environmental critically critical projects and environmental critical areas. I will be um, discussing more further in the coming slides, but however, when we say environmentally critical areas, uh, I take it back. When we say environmentally critical projects, um, these projects are, are like in heavy industries, um, resource extractive industries like mining, and infrastructure projects like building, bridges, um, um, 60 story buildings and so on and so forth. I know you are familiar with this, with the critically, environmentally critical projects. Um, next is, of course, the environmentally critical areas. If your projects are located in the national parks, which is supposedly there should be no uh, major project on national parks, but it depends on your EIA study if your project will be approved. Um, if your project is located in the watershed reservoir, or watershed reserves, or wildlife sanctuaries, and other environmental critical areas in which we will be defining that or we will be uh, putting elaboration, 
we'll be elaborating on this two categories later on. So let's go now to the component scale and time dimensions in the environment. Um, one of the reasons why, again, um, AIA study is very important because um, the AIA will not only consider um, um, one specific of the environment. On this illustration, it actually focuses on the physical environment and the social economic environment. At the same time, it does not only focus on the local scale. Um, it actually depends on the adverse effects, but um, relatively, the EA study will focus not only on the local, but it should also consider regional, national, and of course, beyond national. So um, as we all know, the environment, whatever happens in a certain local, in one way or another will affect the regional scale. And whatever happens in the regional scale, in one way or another, it will affect the national scale. And of course, whatever happens in a national scale will affect the whole earth. Um, I will give you an example. Um, when, was it Mount Pinatubo with the Lahar? Um, I, I don't know if I was born by that time. I think I was born. I think I was just a baby or maybe I was just, I was still in the womb of my mom or I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, when Mount Pinatubo, is it Mount Pinatubo with the Lahar? I, I think so. Um, yeah, so uh, I think it was 1990s when Mount Pinatubo um, erupted on, and in, in, in which it um, emitted and it ejected um, a lot of fumes and a lot of um, volcanic ejecta, um, not only in the surface of, in, in, in Batangas or in the surface of in, in uh, Papanga and areas near the Mount Penatubo, but it actually clouded up um, a huge part of, of our Earth, um, in which there was actually a study that time that um, it, the temperature of Earth actually decreased by a certain percentage um, because of the um, because of the um, covering in the atmosphere um, because of the ashes, uh, volcanic ejecta ashes that covered our atmosphere. And it was actually diffused, not only in the Philippines, but to some other parts of the world. I think you can actually Google that. Um, I bet for sure you can read something about that. So my point is, um, it happened in, in, in a local. It happened in the areas near Mount Pinatubo. But it actually not only affected the regional area, not only the national area, but actually some parts um, of the country, uh, some part of the countries in, in our support of some some other countries i should say at the same time um um the good thing with eia is it actually gives predictions of the potential impacts not only when the when the study is being conducted not only when the study was being constructed not only when after uh, after the construction or after the um the commissioning of the of the project but it will also consider what will happen after five, after 10, after 20 years? It will not only consider now or today, but it will also consider the succeeding years of the study or of the proposed project or development. That is how important the EAA study is. And um, yeah, that is how important it is. And uh, and again, uh, as we study, as we create, or as we draft, or as we, um, yeah, write our EIS, or as we do our EIA study, again, it does not start, It does not consider only for today, but it will consider the succeeding years. 